Hello, and welcome to the Gloucester Biotechnology Academy virtual information session. My name is Ashley Destino, and I'll be your host for the evening. I, along with the other people that you see here, work at GMGI, Gloucester Marine Genomics Institute. GMGI is a nonprofit located in Gloucester's historic harbor and was founded with the belief that the ocean represents a new source of opportunity. We conduct marine research powered in genomics, are creating a th thriving science community right here in Cape Ann and provide innovative education to create new opportunities for young adults. The Academy is GMGI's education initiative, a 10 month hands-on training program that prepares young adults for careers in life sciences and biotech. You might be joining us tonight because you've heard about us and you just wanna learn more, or maybe you're looking for a career change and are interested in how you can apply. Either way, we're so glad you're here. Over the next 45 minutes, we're gonna give you an overview about the Academy program and what it offers, who it's for, and how you can apply. If you have any questions, please feel free to submit them to the Q&A feature at the bottom of your screen. We might not answer them right away, but we'll get to them at the end. Okay, let's get started. As you can see, I'm joined by our wonderful Academy teaching staff. Hi, everybody. Um, let's get started with some introductions. Okay, John, why don't you go first? Sure, thanks, Ash. Uh, my name is John Doyle. I'm the Education Director at Gloucester Biotechnology Academy. Uh, I, I started my career uh, 20 plus years as a teacher, uh, high school, uh, college instructor, and now uh, the last five years here at the Academy. Uh, I have a master's degree in molecular biology and a PhD in oceanography and marine sciences. And I am very much looking forward to working with the class of 2022. Awesome. And John, you're one of the very first GMGI employees, weren't you? I am, I'm employee number two. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, Steve, why don't you go next? Uh, hi, I'm Steve Anderson and I am the lead teacher at uh, the GBA. And I have a degree in biochemistry and a uh, degree in molecular biophysics and biochemistry. Uh, and I am going to be uh, covering the protein uh, section of semester two. Uh, and uh, and um, well, uh, this is gonna be my first year as a teacher at GMGI up to this point. I was a member of the Cambridge Biotech uh, scene. And uh, basically for the last 20 years, I've learned how to operate in that, uh, in that scene. And I'm going to teach you how to do the same. Thanks, Steve. And to contrast, John, you're the newest employee of GMGI. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Um, okay, Che, will you go next? Absolutely. So, hey, uh, my name is Chelsea, or Che, as most call me, um, and I'm an instructor at the Academy. I just finished up my first class uh, teaching. Uh, they graduate next week. I'm really excited and sad at the same time. Um, but my background is mostly in um, a lot of marine sciences, neuroscience, and uh, specifically, um, I'm kind of known for cell culturing um, in our facility, and that's kind of like my favorite part of the curriculum. So I'm really excited to potentially teach uh, our new class. Hopefully you. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, Jay. And Becca. Hi, my name is Becca Barnard. I'm an instructor at the Academy, and I just finished up my second year. So anybody watching you will maybe in the third class, which is really exciting. Um, before the Academy, I was getting my master's at East Carolina University in marine biology, looking at mm -hmm. parasites and non-native species and inverts that nobody really cares about, but also <laughs> teaching. So I'm really glad that I've continued teaching here at the Academy. So looking forward to the next year. Awesome. Thanks, everybody. All right, let's start with some very basics to get everybody on the same page. So John, it's in our name. We know it's really, really important. What is biotechnology? Yeah, so biotechnology is the use of biological molecules, um, in particular DNA and proteins, uh, to create products that make our lives better. Um, so the fundamental skills of biotechnology are used in virtually all lab sciences, um, but are most often used to improve areas of medicine, agriculture, industry, uh, and the environment. Great. Okay, thanks. Now we'll talk a little bit more about it in a little bit when we talk about how we're integrating it into our curriculum because it's a new part of the academy. But Steve, can you tell us about the basics of um, biomanufacturing? Absolutely. Uh, so up to this point, uh, the academy has presented uh, a course uh, involving uh, cloning and protein expression that, that is 
uh, operated at the bench scale, uh, giving you micrograms of material uh, to test. Uh, but really where all the uh, entry level jobs are these days is in manufacturing. We're manufacturing vaccines and viruses and antibodies to use as drugs. And so what we've done this year is we've added to our proteins module to scale up to larger size batches, giving students the experience they need to go into a production facility and uh, operate successfully there. Great, okay. So now for somebody that doesn't have any science background like myself, I've got a basic understanding of what these two fields are, but that doesn't really talk about the academy program. So let's think about why it's all connected. So Becca, give us an explanation as to how those things fold into the academy program. Of course. So here at the Academy, train really passionate people to become entry-level lab technicians to fill those jobs in, you know, in the biotech field and maybe biomanufacturing. So we have a 10-month program, as you said, for the first seven months, students spend their time with us, where we teach them all the basic lab techniques that they will need to hit the ground running in this industry. And so during the first semester, we covered DNA workflow. And that is where you'll learn all the integral experiments from extraction to sequencing. And in the second semester, as Steve's touched upon, you'll be diving into proteins where we'll be growing and manipulating bacteria and that produce proteins of interest um, at both the small bench scale and at a larger biomanufacturing scale. And we'll also train students to grow and maintain mammalian cells, which is Chase specialty. So by the end of the seven months, you'll be ready to enter any biotech company out there. That's amazing. That's a lot yeah. for seven months, but that's awesome. Um, okay, so that's the technical side of things. Do you guys help students with like career skills and how to interview? Because I know some people probably come into the program without that skill set, and I know it's a really important one. Yeah, no, of course. So we're not just about the science here. We're also making sure that you're a professional. So we'll do all sorts of career skills every week from resume and cover letter writing to professional communications and networking and even extend into time management, budgets, teamwork, all that sort of thing. So um, we make sure all of the students are really well-rounded and ready for that professional setting. That's great, that's so yeah. great. So that's what happens inside the lab, right? For seven months, but it's a 10 month program. So what happens to those other three months when they go outside of the academy teaching lab and into the world on their internships, what happens then, Jay? Yeah, so um, after completing those two semesters with us in our labs, um, you're invited to move on to the internship portion of our curriculum. Um, so these will be full-time paid internships um, that some of them are local. You will find locations on the North Shore um, at startups, industry, or um, based labs or in the Cambridge, Boston area, which could also be industry, but sometimes academic based labs. Um, we try our best to place our students at an internship that best fits their interests as well as their skill sets. Um, and then once they go off, they, um, you know, enjoy their internships and get those that experience for three months. It's already time for graduation. I feel like it's like a blink of an eye. Um, and by this point, um, all of our students will have all of the necessary knowledge and skills to begin their careers uh, in biotechnology. Wow. So even though you're going to be moving on from us at the academy, um, you know, we will still be there for you as a research resource. You know, we have an alumni association where we like to do um, career development and networking opportunities uh, through that. And we also are always here to help with uh, position placements. So even though you go on to do, you know, bigger and better biotech things, the academy will always be a resource for you. That's really important because after graduation can be a really scary time for graduates. So that's really important. And side note, then class of 2021 is graduating next week, right? It's so exciting. <laughs> Um, so Che mentioned a little bit about the jobs that they help, or that we help the graduates get, but some people might not know what an entry-level lab tech does. So John, can you give us a kind of overview of what that job position might be like? Sure. So um, entry-level lab technicians are really the foundation of the laboratory. Um, many times people hear entry-level and they think the work is going to be unimportant or mundane when the reality is just the opposite. Um, Lab technicians are responsible for setting up and running experiments, knowing how to clean and calibrate um, instrumentation, obviously operating that instrumentation, uh, gathering data, 
and reporting the results of those data back to fellow team members, um, lab managers, um, and you know other members of the lab, so that critical next experiments can be conducted. So, really, the work they're doing is is fundamental to what what's happening in the lab. Um, everybody relies on them. There's a lot of responsibility involved. And it sounds like everything that they'd be doing in an entry level lab position would be things that they've already done at the academy. Absolutely, yeah. We we train them exactly as if they are um, in a job. That's the way we treat the academy experience, so that they're prepared when they get to um, the the internship or even you know their full time employment. What an amazing opportunity! That's so great. Um, so, like I mentioned before, the GMGI building in the institute is located on the harbor, but the academy teaching lab is up at Blackburn Center, right in the industrial park. Um, and we've been there since 2016 when the first class started. Um, John, can you tell us a little bit more about the space? Yeah, so I'm gonna share my screen. Hopefully everybody can see this. Okay. Um, all right, can you guys, can everybody see that? Looks great. Excellent, okay. So um, when we go into the lab, there, there's a teaching classroom here. This is our main laboratory space. Uh, it's a beautiful wide open space, state of the art equipment. On this right bench here is some more of the high end equipment. On the, the uh, middle benches here are some of the um, more regular equipment that you would see in any biotech lab. There's seating here for 20 students. Uh, and the idea of this lab is to really train our students on industry standard equipment that they'll see when they go off to their internship um, and their full-time uh, employment experiences. So um, when we leave this lab, there's gonna be a, a temporary wall here you see on the right, and Steve's gonna explain, that's our new biomanufacturing space. This lab that we're going into is our state-of-the-art uh, mammalian cell culture lab. This is where we teach the students how to do aseptic technique and grow different mammalian cell lines, which is used very often in industry and is a very critical skill to have. So down here, the hallway on the right is our uh, DNA sequencing lab. So here's where you learn how to uh, sequence uh, DNA, which is a skill set that you wouldn't learn unless you were probably uh, junior, senior year in college, if not graduate school. Um, and our students get to experience that um, while they're at the academy. So the takeaway from all of that is basically that it's industry standard equipment, it's state-of-the-art equipment, and it's the, the same type of equipment that students are gonna see when they go to their internships and their jobs. And that's our, our role is to prepare them um, for that. Yeah, and I think one of the um, important, or I think one of my favorite facts about the Academy, Academy Teaching Lab is that before the Institute was built on the harbor, that's, this lab is where all the um, GMJ researchers and scientists did their work, right? So it's a real yeah, working yeah. lab. Yeah, so um, they, the researchers used that rear bench in the lab. Um, that's where they performed all of their first experiments at GMGI. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, so John, you mentioned it and you showed a little bit in that video, but, um, and I can attest to it because when I've come up to the academy, I hear all the banging and the construction noise. So there's some really exciting things going on at the academy. Um, Steve, can you tell us a little bit more about that? Sure. Um, and uh, pause for a second while I share my screen. All right. Can everybody see this? Perfect. Yeah, it looks good. All right, so we're starting from the uh, original space. And the first new space we see is this uh, state-of-the-art classroom. It'll hold 20 to 25 students. We have a uh, large kitchenette area because we have a lot of our students that uh, go off to a job after they're done with class for the day. We want them to be able to have a hot meal or have a, a good breakfast, uh, whatever they need. And this is the actual lab itself. It's 100. 1,200 square feet. It's four benches, each with its own uh, uh, air handling system for keeping uh, the bio uh, organisms uh, contained. Uh, you can see uh, there's a state-of-the-art uh, fermenter. There are five of them uh, to the left. There's a state-of-the-art analytics uh, nook over there, some hoods. Uh, this is a prep area 
that uh, will be used uh, to, uh, to do some of the uh, work uh, behind the scenes. There's a uh, space for the instructor to do demonstrations. And then we have a, uh, an appliance area where we have freezers, ice machines, uh, autoclaves, et cetera, you know, to, to make all of this stuff uh, run properly. Uh, this uh, space is designed by the renowned architectural firm Payette and made possible by a $940,000 workforce skills capital grant from the Baker Polito administration. Uh, the new lab is connected to the old one and doubles the uh, amount of square footage to 6,400 square feet and allows us to double the number of students that we can enroll in the program every year. So now we're leaving the lab and you see there are additional rooms behind it. Uh, one of these is going to be a separate uh, state-of-the-art bioreactor lab where we grow mammalian cells. Uh, we're going to have a room for nursing mothers and there's some space for faculty and staff as well. Uh, we then reach this corridor that goes around the other side of the lab. Uh, there are spaces for students to sit and study uh, or I have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with another student or instructor. Uh, without taking their eyes off of the experiments going on on the other side of the glass. Uh, and finally, we make it back to the classroom, uh, which has been outfitted with state-of-the-art uh, audio and visual equipment so that we can present all of the uh, curriculum for the biomanufacturing section. What a beautiful space. That is, it's so exciting. And like I said, it doubles the size, it doubles the amount of students that you can take in the program. That's really exciting. And the class that's coming in, the class of 2022 is gonna be the first one to use it, right? Yep. Wow, that's great. Um, speaking of, you guys are accepting applications for the class of 2022, right? And there's still some spaces available. Yep. Um, so let's talk a little bit about that, about people who might be interested in applying. John, what kind of student, young adult, um, graduate, would be eligible to apply? Uh, so applicants have to be high school graduates, whether they have a, a state issued diploma, a high set or a GED. Um, their age is 18 to 26, uh, residents of the greater Cape Ann region, um, which is Rockport, Gloucester, Manchester, Essex, Ipswich, Hamilton, Wenham, Beverly, Danvers, Peabody, Salem, uh, or Lynn. They have a passion for science, um, they like to work with their hands. Um, they have an ability to follow detailed instructions and they complete tasks in a timely manner. I think the one thing that really um, sticks out in our mind is the student who's you know, sitting on the edge of their seat in, in the interview and they can't wait to get the white lab coat on and, and get to the, to the bench to start working. I mean, that's the thing that really shows us they have the passion. Yeah, it sounds like it's a very important part. Um, what does something a program like this cost, John? Uh, so tuition for the year is $9,400. Uh, we have very generous funding available uh, for financial aid. In fact, uh, the majority of our students who apply um, receive some form of financial aid. And the idea here is that we never want um, the cost of the program to be a barrier for our students to achieve a professional career. Right, that's important too, that's great. So if somebody is thinking, okay, I'm passionate, I wanna do science and I have time and I wanna make this program happen, how would they do that? Jay, can you walk us through the application process? Absolutely, give me one second, I'm gonna share my screen. Oh, not that, <laughs> here it is. So it is. I'm on the, um, you know, you can go to gmgi.org um, I right now am under the education tab and I've selected biotechnology certificate program. So here is just more information about everything we're talking about currently. Um, but if you are looking at this page and you're like, wow, yes, I definitely would like to apply. I just go back up to the education tab, click apply. Um, and here you will see, you know, all of the admission requirements again, um, and our application process, um, as well as the fees, tuition and fees and, and such. But you can go ahead and just click download application. Uh, and it pops up right here as a PDF. And in that case, you can go ahead and fill it out. And if you would like to mail it, here's the address. Um, you can mail it right to us. Or uh, if you'd like to schedule a tour, uh, we'd be more than happy to schedule one for you and you can bring it in, in person. Um, Oh no, did Shay freeze? She might've froze. Okay, 
I think she was at the end of her application spiel anyway, but that's how you apply. And um, like, I think she was in the it middle was of that. Yeah. Oh, she's back. There we go. <laughs> Did I freeze? So that's okay though. We got it. We got it. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> Um, so Jay, that's how you apply. Those are logistics. We got all the information about what the program offers. So, but the really big question here is, do you need to know math? Do you need to know science? You need to be a science whiz to do this? Cause this can be really intimidating. Becca, what do you think? Absolutely not. Um, as John said, as long as you have the passion, then you'll find a home here. Most of the students that we've taken in the past love science in some way. Like that's I mean, you're going into science, so I hope you you have a passion and love it, but math is generally, you know, a taboo subject. We'll teach you everything that you need to know. So don't be cracking open textbooks or anything like that. Um, as long as you have the drive, we'll supply the knowledge. That's okay. And I think we've heard of it from all graduates and past students that if you're if a student's struggling with something, you know, the instructors are there to help. And no matter what it takes, they're there to support you and get you through what any kind of challenges you have with the curriculum or you know the areas that can be hard but that's what you guys are there for exactly yeah so whenever you need help you just let us know and we'll find a way to help you out great okay that was so much good information thank you guys so much for sharing that um, we've got some good questions coming in so let's um get to our q a unless anybody else has anything to add anybody else have anything to say okay on the questions questions <laughs> let's get to the questions all right first one is about schedule about the daily schedule um, what does it look like? Do you get time for lunch? Is it Monday through Friday? Do you have to come in on the weekend? What does that look like? Absolutely, I can take this one. Um, so the schedule for this upcoming year will be 8.30 to 2.30. Um, and it's usually like 8.30, we start a lecture or, you know, depending on what experiments we're running that week, you're jumping right in. Uh, daily, the schedule will change, but the time frame will always be 8.30 to 2.30. Um, that being said, we like to open our doors at 8 a.m. and close them at 3.30 to give students a little extra time before or after class if needed. Um, but, and of course there's lunch. Uh, there's definitely always 30 minute lunch. Um, but if there's an opportunity where you get to plan your experiments that day and you are doing great and you are like, hey, I have a whole hour, so be it. But um, most of the time, we are planning, right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, time it sounds like if it's if you guys end at 2.30, then that kind of gives somebody um, the opportunity to go to a job after this class ends. You know, I can still if you have a family, that's all doable if you are still participating in the program. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. It, the, so the, the course was designed that with that in mind, so people can work um, part time or even full time, um, you know, and, and still go to the academy. Yeah, because I'm sure some people are coming to the program while they still have jobs, you know, not rest necessarily right out of, out of high school. So that's a really important feature. Yeah. Um, okay, next question that I see, do we have to find our own internships? Um, I know we touched on that a little bit, but john, can you kind of elaborate a little bit more on that? Yeah, so we, you don't have to find your own internships. We set that up for you. Um, it's sort of in the background as, as the students are um, training in the lab, we're working behind the scenes to make connections with different companies um, so that the internships are in place. Uh, so that, yeah, there's no need to worry about that. Great. And kind of along I've got to add. Oh, oh sorry. Go ahead, Becca. I was going to say, I have to add something. Um, John is entirely too kind to the rest of us. John finds everyone's internships and he spends months doing it. So you don't have to thank Che or I or Steve. It's all John and he should 100% take the credit for that. Team effort. It's a team effort. It, Total okay, team effort. well, sure. <laughs> um, along those same lines, another question is asking about jobs after graduation. Um, Steve, what do you, can you um, touch on that, please? Sure. Um, so, uh, we were very successful at placing our students. I think at this point uh, of our, our current class, 75% uh, have already found uh, a job and the uh, internship isn't even over. So uh, we're very successful uh, at, at placing people. Uh, we all have uh, many, many connections within uh, the Cape Ann and uh, larger greater Boston area biotech communities. So if there's a place you want to work, we might know somebody there that can uh, at least uh, get you in for a listen. So, um, you know, 
we, we, we beat the bushes trying to find uh, appropriate places to place people. And uh, uh, so far, uh, we, we've had a great deal of success. Yeah, you guys have a really good track record of placement, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. um, here's a good question. And um, do you need to take the SAT or ACT to participate in the program? John, you're nodding your head, no? That. Yeah, the, you don't need to have the ACT or SAT to, to be in the program. The, the only requirement um, in terms of the academics is that you have a high school diploma. Um, okay. That's the only thing we, we, we require. Right. Great. Okay, lots of good questions. Next one, what is the workload like? Is there a lot of homework? Yeah, good I'll, question. I'll very that. fair. <laughs> um, the workload, there's a lot. Um, so we've packed a whole lot into seven months in house, and you know, we cover a lot of ground. So it's fast moving. There's just a lot being thrown out of our students. That being said, um, we plan it so that you have time to hopefully get everything done. If you've managed your time wisely, you don't have any homework. Um, and for the first semester, you can't take your notebook home. So you have to manage your time wisely. So um, we, we know that our students have jobs. We know that they have lives outside of the academy, that they've got things to do. So we don't want this. This isn't school. This is job training. So everything should be done in, in our building. So great. Yeah, that seems reasonable. A lot of a lot of hard work in those school hours, and then you know get a little bit of break from two on two thirty on a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> um, what kind of COVID protocols in place? I know we're kind of getting out of the thick of things and seeing the light at the end of the tunnel here, but I understand that COVID can be a little bit of a or still a concern for a lot of people. So, um, what are you? What is the protocols for the academy program? Um, I'll steal that one too, because um, I'm also the chemical hygiene officer in the safety hat at the academy, so feels kind of fitting. So um, I will say for this past year, what we did was we did um, twice daily temperature checks, once in the morning and once in the afternoon for the students. Everyone that was in the building had to sign in, um, and we're still doing the sign-in procedures. Uh, masks were mandatory in the lab. We also wore face shields in addition to that because we weren't always able to keep the social distancing what we wanted. Um, but outside the lab, social distancing was enforced. We sanitized all of um, everything, I guess. We sanitized everything. The students had to sanitize their benches every time they left. Um, and then we just kept a really open dialogue with the students. You know, if they weren't feeling well, you know, two years ago, maybe they had a little cold and a little sniffle, they'd come in anyway. But this year we were very strict. If they were feeling any bit under the weather, if they had any sort of symptom, they weren't to come in and they were very good about telling us that. And because of all of that, we didn't have any COVID outbreaks, which is amazing because we were 100% in person. So, um, you know, we're, we're gonna follow the science and, and do what makes the most sense, but we had a really good time last year. So I don't anticipate any problems this upcoming year. You guys nailed it. No COVID yeah. cases. That's great. Nailed Way to it. go. It's fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, going back to the workload and uh, um, the you know, participation in the program, somebody's wondering how you're graded. How is a student graded in the program? Yeah, I can, uh, I can beat Becca to this one. Um, <laughs> so we go off of a pass-fail system, um, and that system is basically so we can encourage learning through troubleshooting. Um, you know, it's, it's going to be weekly assignments that are going to be due at the end of each week. Um, we're going to have weekly competencies, which are timed hands-on assessments of, of what, you know, you've been doing in the lab. Um, we do uh, require uh, each student to give a presentation each, each semester, uh, which is always really fun. Um, so so it's, we're going to go based off of things like that. Um, and as Becca stated, no homework. We try really hard to get all of that done within our week, uh, within our workday, so nothing gets carried over into the weekend or um, carried home with you. So that's yeah. great. Thanks, Jay. Um, we've talked a lot about graduation and people taking um, jobs after graduation and getting placed, but what we didn't really talk about it was sometimes people go back to college to study science at a higher level. And I bring that up because somebody asked about whether or not there's college credits available for this program. Um, does completing the talk, does completing this program transfer over any credits? So John, can you um yeah, so, 
I can talk to that. So um, with the agreements that we've put in place, uh, we have two schools right now who've um, vetted our curriculum, Salem State and North Shore Community College have both sent um, professors from their science departments to, to look at our curriculum, look at our labs, look at the type of equipment we teach on. And they've assigned credit to our program for any student who completes the academy and then um, in, uh, enrolls and is accepted into either of those schools for uh, a science major. So um, North Shore Community College, basically what they do is they, they have a four credit class that they waive uh, for any student who um, enrolls in their biotech program um, and has completed the academy. Salem State uh, gives our students nine credits for having completed our program. Um, so those nine credits um, would go towards um, a major in any one of their sciences, whether it be biochem, chem, biology, whatever they choose. So um, yeah, we're currently working on um, other agreements with other schools in the area, but those are the two that most of our students choose to go to for uh, proximity and affordability. Those are two really great schools in the area. That's fantastic that there's such a good partnership between the Academy and them. That's great. Yeah. Okay, last question is, it's kind of a good one. Somebody's wondering if John will drive me to my internship if I don't have a car. <laughs> Absolutely not, no. <laughs> what, what, do you, what do you do if you don't have a car and you have to get an internship in Boston? What happens? Um, so what we do, if you think about it, it actually can be easier to get into Cambridge or downtown Boston uh, via train um, than it can be, you know, to get to Ipswich or even areas of Beverly, right, with, without a car. So what we try to do is look at the individual students' logistical requirements. So if they don't have a car, you know, we talk to them about where can you, what, what can you access on the, the T. Right? Can you take the, the commuter rail into um, Beverly Station and walk across the street to the Cumming Center, which has you know, a lot of um, startup biotech companies like within walking distance of the train, right? So that's quite easy. Also, you know, downtown um, Cambridge or Boston, the same idea, companies that have shuttles or um, have uh, easy access to the trains that you can, you can get to them. Uh, GMGI will also help with um, transportation in the first month of the internship. So um, we realize that students might not have the money to afford a T pass or, or gas uh, before they start getting paid in an internship. So we'll help with that first month where we'll supply the gas money or the, or the T pass. And then when the student starts working in the second and third month, they have to pay for it themselves. Um, so there's, there's a, a lot of support in place there. Um, That's great. It sounds like you guys are really intentional and thoughtful about where these internships are in a way to yeah. be supportive of the students. Yeah. That's great. Um, next question is what kind of starting salaries do these um, graduates earn at their internship or at their jobs after they graduate? Isn't I, oh, I was going to say, isn't it? I think it's around like 40 ish thousand. Is that great, John? That's about the average is about 42. Um, yeah this year's class is anywhere between 40 and 45. Um, that's been about what the average has been for the last two years. But the, the range of salaries is anywhere from about 35 to start up to about 55, depending on um, where you're working. Obviously, it's, you know, a little bit higher if you work in Cambridge or Boston. Mm -hmm. That's great. Okay. Um, those are some really great questions. Thank you, everybody who submitted them. That was really helpful and I think it covered a lot of things that we didn't touch on as specifically during the um, during the tracking part. So thank you very much for everybody who submitted those. Um, does anybody have anything else to add that we didn't cover? Teaching team? I think I'm <laughs> excited to uh, see the class of 2022. So please reach out if you are interested um, or need any extra information from us. Absolutely. Yeah. No, for sure. We're very available. Um, and just always happy to talk about the program and brag about our students and, and all of that. So if you're interested at all and need any sort of convincing, talk to the four of us. You know, we're not even a, a little bit biased. <laughs> not a little bit. <laughs> not a little bit. We're just <laughs> very. <laughs> yeah, we're very excited for our students to graduate next week. And um, 
it will be on Facebook Live. So if you're even interested in popping in and just seeing what graduation looks like, um, please join us. Thanks, Jay. Thanks for plugging that. That's right. Graduation is next Thursday and it will be broadcast live on Facebook, which is great. Um, so thank you again, John, Jay, Steve, Becca, for all this great information. It was so helpful. And I hope everybody at home enjoyed learning about the Academy. And thanks for spending your Thursday evening with us. Um, like everybody said, we are still accepting applications and applicants for our class of 2022. So please reach out. I'm going to share my screen to end the session. Um, it has some information on where to apply, where to download the application, and who you can contact for a tour, uh, or if you have any additional questions. So thank you guys again very much, and have a great rest of your evening. Thanks, everybody. Thank, thank you. Bye-bye.